Hey everyone, it's Rob from Frugal Radio. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is a channel where we explore the magic and mystery of radio waves. And if you're a returning subscriber, then thank you for being here once again. Today, I'm going to show you what was in a package that I recently received from the team over at the RTLSDR.com blog. Yes, they sent me a Kraken SDR to play with, and honestly, I had the most amazing time messing around with this unit. So I invite you to see the prep work that I did to set up the Kraken SDR and start using it. That's part one, and that's this video you're watching. And in the future, I'll be releasing part two, where I take you on a drive with me and you get to see how good the Kraken actually was at pinpointing the location of two unknown transmitter sites. I hope that you'll join along with me, liking and subscribing, but for now, let's jump right on in. The Kraken SDR kit I received came in two boxes. One containing the SDR enclosure and the other containing the optional five magnetic mount antennas. As you can see, everything was professionally packaged and FedEx got the shipment to me in Canada in about three days. The Kraken is presented in a professional metal enclosure with two USB-C type ports on the front, one for powering the unit and the other for outputting data to a computer. On top is a small fan used to keep the electronics at a reasonable temperature. The day I tested the Kraken it was plus 32 Celsius outside in a car with no air conditioning and the SDR remained stable throughout. The rear of the unit contains five SMA female ports used for connecting the antennas. These are stamped channel 0 through channel 4. On the bottom of the enclosure are four feet allowing air to pass beneath the SDR and keep it cool and physically stable when used on a desk or a mount. The second box contains the crack antenna set. Opening it reveals five telescopic antennas, each attached to a strong magnetic base. The antenna mounts are also equipped with SMA female connectors. When performing direction finding activities, it's important to use matching antennas. The slightest variations can result in very mixed results. When I tested this kit in real life, I was amazed at the performance, and this really speaks to the engineering and quality control that has gone into the production of these. Here the antennas are shown in their collapsed state. Removing the foam that held the antennas in place reveals five neatly packaged SMA male-to-male -male coaxial cables, one for each of the five channels supported by the Kraken. Each one bears a label that can be used to ensure the appropriate antenna will be delivering signals to the correct channel of the receiver. Since the antennas are telescopic, you can easily adjust them to the most appropriate length for the signals you will be searching for. With this kit, you can easily tune the antennas anywhere from around 100 MHz in the fully extended position to around 1 GHz when collapsed. That's a great deal of spectrum you can cover with this kit. Now as great as the Kraken SDR and antenna kits are, you will need several other items before you are able to go direction finding. These include a computer, USB power and data cables, and a method to power the Kraken and your computer when mobile. The RTL SDR team recommended using a single board computer like the Raspberry Pi. I found I was unable to purchase a Pi 4 as a result of the current supply chain crisis, but thankfully I was able to source a new Pi 400 kit for $149 Canadian dollars. I picked up a couple of new USB A to C cables, one to power the Kraken and one to provide the data link between the Kraken and the Pi. I already had a third cable I could use to power the Pi 400. I also picked up a new car charger that could provide multiple simultaneous 5V USB outputs at over 3 amps each. The Kraken and Pi both perform best if they have at least 2.4 amps of steadily available current. Now before we go any further I want to make sure that you guys don't miss out on part 2 of this video. In order to make sure you get it, be sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you have notifications switched on. 
then you will be notified when part two has been released. You'll see how the Kraken SDR completely blew my mind by finding the exact location of a transmitter in less than two minutes. So make sure you're subscribed to the Frugal Radio channel, you've got the notifications switched on, and while you're here, why not hit the like button? Thanks. The wiki pages are where the documentation for the Kraken reside on the web. You can find them at the GitHub site linked in the description below. A sample diagram shows the equipment you will need to go direction finding. In addition to the Kraken and antennas, you'll need a computer like the Pi 4, although you can download and run the scripts on other single board computers or something like a Linux laptop. Docker and virtual machine images are also available. As you saw earlier, I ended up using a Raspberry Pi 400. I also needed a total of four USB A to C cables. One to power the Pi, one to power the Kraken SDR, one to power my cell phone, and one to provide the data link between the Kraken and the Pi. Learning about the Kraken can be achieved by reading through the documentation on the wiki. These pages list the best practices for using the device, including proper antenna setup and some direction finding theory. Spend plenty of time here before you set up your device. Pay particular attention to sections 2, 3 and 4. These will guide you through your first real-life direction finding experiences. Next you'll need to download the software. On the Kraken RF GitHub site you can link through to the releases page to download the latest SD card image for a Raspberry Pi. Using my Linux Mint PC, I navigated to the releases section and downloaded version 1.3. I've placed a link in the description to this download. I extracted the image from the zip archive which took a few minutes. While I was waiting, I removed the SD card from the back of the Pi 400, inserted it into a USB adapter, then plugged it into my computer. When the image file was unpacked, I used the Linux Mint USB Image Writer application to burn the image to the SD card. When that had completed, I also created a WPA supplicant configuration file and wrote that to the SD card. This would enable the Pi to connect to my phone hotspot rather than generate its own Wi-Fi, meaning all the devices would have full access to the internet. Lastly, the SD card was popped back in the Pi 400, making it ready for boot. The next piece of software required was the Kraken SDR application. I use an Android phone, so downloaded it directly from the Google Play Store. Again, there's a link in the description below. It is important to precisely position your antennas for direction finding, so using the template to make an array spacer is highly recommended. The files are located on the GitHub pages. Print two copies of the arms as you will need five in total and each page contains three. I set my printer to scale at 100% rather than fit to page. The goal was to have it replicate the PDF file exactly without resizing anything. For some reason though this didn't work for me and my antenna arms were sized wrongly. You'll also need to print the antenna middle section. Then it is a case of cutting and pasting the old school way. I glued the arms to the middle section and also applied clear packaging tape to the joints. However, my lengths from the middle were incorrect when I measured with a ruler or tape measure. To compensate for this, I drew a line on each leg at 14 centimeters, which is what I needed for the frequencies I would be using. I knew my array needed to be spaced at 14 centimeters because I made use of the array calculator. This is a simple spreadsheet downloadable from the GitHub site. When you enter the desired frequency in megahertz, it calculates the spacing needed between the five antennas of the array. Spacing multipliers of 0.2 to 0.5 are acceptable, although I chose to shoot for 0.4 to 0.5. When I plugged in 858 MHz to the calculator, I could see the antennas needed a spacing of about 17.4 cm from each other, and that the max radius would be 14.87 cm. I figured 14 cm would be a good size to aim for, so scrolled down to the array radius section of the calculator. 
inputting 14 centimeters here allowed me to see that I would end up with a spacing multiplier of around 0.47 which in turn would provide excellent resolution for direction finding. This is when I drew the lines of my template at the 14 centimeter point. The Kraken SDR is a new device and is currently being shipped out to the initial backers on CrowdSupply where it received over six times the funding that was needed to get the project off the ground. You can find out more about ordering a unit at the CrowdSupply website linked in the description below. You'll also be able to find out more by visiting the rtlsdr.com blog. Now you've seen how I got set up for my direction finding adventure. The prep work paid off as I was able to pinpoint the location of a transmission site in less than two minutes the first time I took the device on the road. Footage from the real life road test is in part two, so keep your eye on the channel and I'll see you back here soon. For now, this is Frugal Radio, out.